Greetings, my name is Kevin Ragnick and I welcome you to my channel, Conversations from the Hot Box. Here we are passionate about discussing real life issues and I do so from a Christian biblical perspective. Our goal is to provide a platform where we can engage in open and honest conversations about topics that are relevant to our daily lives. I believe that by sharing our experiences and insights, we can not only learn from one another, but also grow in our faith and understanding of God's word. I invite you to join us in these conversations and be a part of our growing community. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on your notifications and like this channel so you won't miss one of our episodes. Today's conversation addresses the power of thought as a man thinks. This is part one of a two-part series. So let's jump in the car and let's run. A few of the key topics we will unpack, examine, and discuss in this session are the process of right thinking, the goal of right thinking, the foundation of right thinking, the benefits of right thinking. So let's start. If you have found yourself in a negative relationship, in negative situations or circumstances, it is very likely your thinking pattern made you susceptible to it and also kept you in it. Discovering what those patterns are will be helpful as you seek to walk in freedom. What you think about will determine how you feel and ultimately will direct your decision making. To identify the thinking patterns that led you into these issues, we must evaluate your wrong thinking. Then you can change your thoughts, which will change your choices, which will change your actions, which will change your life. However, to identify wrong thinking, we must be able to engage in what I call right thinking. Right thinking involves a process. So let's uh, walk or talk through a context gathering element of this process for a learning experience and example. This is to help us understand that without having a complete picture or context of our subject, our concerns, our challenges, our issues, problems, and concerns of life, we miss the essence power and value of our thinking ability to correctly provide plans, solutions, strategies, and so forth. So let's begin by looking at uh, Proverbs 23 and 7 as the target of our experience. Proverbs 23 and 7 states, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. I'm going to stop there because many times when individuals quote that scripture, that's where they stop. It. So without any further context, what do you believe this text is communicating? Context reveals the circumstances, culture, events, relationships, and environment that helps form a text or scripture. This additional information allows the text uh, to be fully understood and assessed. In interpreting in context, it is referred to as a process that involves at least three steps. First, uh, studying the immediate context. Several scriptures preceding and following the text that should be studied. This is referred to as the immediate context. Second, studying the remote context. Usually this is two to three chapters around where the text occurred. And then number three is considering the concept, context excuse me, of the entire book where the uh, text is found. So if we're reading uh, John 16, 11, then we want to read the whole letter of John. And this is called contextualization or context process. It allows us to analyze, understand, gather, identify, and evaluate additional information. This allows us to create a new block of knowledge and understanding. So let's do an exercise again, uh, 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 just using step one 
on Proverbs 23 and 7. So let's start with verses 1 through 3 of Proverbs 23. Those three three verses state, (laughs) When you sit to eat with a ruler, consider carefully what is before you, and put a knife to your throat if you are a man given to appetite. Do not desire his delicacies, for they are deceptive food. Now, the first point of this text is to express the importance of discerning who your host is. Next, if you do not practice self-reliance, it will be like you are putting a knife to your throat. In other words, you are placing your life in jeopardy by being indebted to the host. You should not be desirous of the host's deceptive food, which is literally a bread of lies. And this is a warning that the ruler's hospitality may have an evil or disturbing purpose. Now let's look at verse 6. It says, Do not eat the bread of a miser, nor desire his delicacies. Now we are given instructions regarding eating with a miser. A miser is a person who hoards wealth and spends as little money as possible. So a ruler can also be a miser. And this seems to instruct us not to eat at all with such individuals. Now let's look at verse 8. It says, The morsel you have eaten you will vomit up and waste your pleasant words. This text provides a metaphor warning us of the consequences of eating with the individuals described in the verses we just read. The metaphor is a way of, of saying the pound of flesh you enjoy will be required. The term pleasant word in the text refers to the expressions of thankfulness, appreciation, and etc. that one would normally offer for being invited to a dining experience. Now let's look at the whole verse of seven. For it says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. Again, a reference to eating with someone who doesn't appear to have the best character or integrity. Now we have the context of Proverbs 23 and 7. An excellent translation of this Hebrew text that supports the contextualization is found in the Jewish study Bible, starting at verse 6. And it reads, Do not eat of a stingy man's food. Do not crave for his dainties. For he is like one keeping accounts. Eat and drink, he says to you, but he does not really mean it. In context, the message here is a warning about eating at the table of a person who has a hidden, dark agenda. They carefully calculate the cost of entertaining you, and they are only entertaining you for the purpose of placing you in their debt. Ultimately, you'll be sorry you ever ate with them and will even wish you could vomit up what you did eat. Sisters, I know some of you can relate. Think about that wonderful date you had. He takes you out and provides you with a fine dining experience. You're very impressed. You're also completely unaware that every piece of that filet mignon, every bite of that wonderful baked potato, that fork of of strawberry pecan salad you put in your mouth, and every sip of your imported bottled water, that individual is adding up the cost. (laughs) The cost of what you now owe him according to his thinking. This is the individual Proverbs 23 and 7 is talking about. His expectation is that you are going to pay up with a pound of your flesh after your wonderful dining experience. I mean, just look at him. With every bite and every sip you take, his smile just gets bigger and bigger. Now, what we just engaged in involved was known as high-level thinking. It is a critical component of both the process and foundation of right thinking. 
High level thinking goes beyond basic observation of information and the memorization of it. It allows us to be more skillful in distinguishing fact from fiction, to be sharper in our integrating and evaluating of information and be able to clearly communicate, solve problems and discover truths or comprehend revelations from God. High level thinking is thinking that incorporates six levels of human mental abilities. Right thinking is obtained when we take these six levels of mental abilities and place them under the revealing and discerning ability of the Holy Spirit. Our goal is to move from just functioning in understanding and memorizing information. This is low level. We also want to be engaged in application, in other words, making use of the information, followed by analysis, which is taking the information apart of what I refer to as unpacking it, and then be able to provide evaluation, which is weighing and determining the value of the information. And then based on those preceding processes, we are capable of creation, which is putting the information together and creating a new block of, of, of information or rather knowledge of physical manifestation. For example, Henry Ford and the uh, Model T car. It is the creation of new blocks of knowledge or new mindsets that shift us into new dimensions. See, this may appear to be hard, but it's not. However, it is complicated. Being complicated means consisting of many interconnecting parts or elements is intricate. For example, playing chess requires understanding the movement, value, power, and purpose of six pieces. Checkers requires understanding the movement and power of two pieces. In this, we see that chess is a little more intricate but it does not require any additional force or strength. In other words, it's not hard. High level thinking versus low level thinking is like chess versus checkers. How we think constructs our mindsets and our belief systems. Whatever we accept, reason to be true and think of as true shapes what we believe. A belief is information, true or false, that you understand and choose to declare real in your consciousness. To believe is to consider true something for which you have uh, uh, really no or proof of. There is uh, evidence of the truth of something. We don't say that we believe. We say that we know. For example, I know the Bible says it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. But if I do not believe Christ has set us free, what I know becomes fruitless. And this issue is vitally important because our beliefs, our convictions, and ideals form our personal philosophies. And they also serve as the source of our perceptions of ourselves and others as well as life itself. In essence, our philosophies determine the way we think. In fact, we live uh, uh, our thoughts and we manifest them in our attitudes towards ourselves and others and our lifestyle. And to truth be told, we cannot live beyond our thoughts and convictions. But well, that's going to end it for me today in this session. I hope you enjoyed the ride. Please uh, continue to uh, like us, subscribe to this channel, and again, uh, click the notification button so you can be notified when we release new content. And I want to invite you to tune in for part two of our discussion on the power of thoughts. And if you would like to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please click on the button above, stating in prayer of salvation. Now, as always, peace and blessings to you 
in your household.